Henry VIII is known today as England's most notorious king, however he was very fortunate to have actually come onto the throne. Although Henry was a son of Henry VII, he did have an older brother, who was considered to be a great hope for the House of Tudor, which had been established following the Wars of the Roses. Arthur Tudor, the Prince of Wales, was born around four years earlier than Henry VIII, and there were huge plans for the eldest son of Henry VII. Today we look at the tragic life and death of Arthur Tudor, the man who should have reigned instead of Henry VIII. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Henry VII had in 1485 defeated Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth Field, bringing the Wars of the Roses seemingly to an end. To secure peace across the nation, Henry who had fought for the House of Lancaster, sought to unite the two warring factions by marrying Elizabeth of York. Elizabeth had fallen pregnant, and was sent to St Swithin's Priory to give birth there. Henry VII ordered historians to trace his family history back to ancient British rulers, and decided that his firstborn son should be named after King Arthur. In the evening of around the 19th of September 1486, a son was born to Elizabeth and Henry, named Arthur, at around 1am. The baby was noted to have been strong and able, and Arthur was seen as a living symbol of a united England, between the dynastic families that had been warring previously, and also the House of Tudor. Arthur was a great hope to the nation, and at birth he became the Duke of Cornwall. Four days after he was born, he was baptised in a huge ceremony at Winchester Cathedral, and his godparents such as the Earl of Oxford, Earl of Derby, Earl of Arundel, Queen Elizabeth Woodville and Cecily of York, showed how high class and important this son would be. Arthur was raised initially at a nursery in Farnham, and at the age of three would become a Knight of the Bath. He was also invested and appointed as the Prince of Wales and also the Earl of Chester. The young boy of around four was shrouded in titles and riches, and as part of his investiture, he was taken down the River Thames in the Royal Barge. He was then met at Chelsea by the Lord Mayor of London, and at Lambeth Palace by Spanish and European ambassadors. His investiture was a huge ceremony, fit for the boy who would one day become, hopefully, the future King of England. On the 8th of May 1491, he became a Knight of the Garter in another elaborate ceremony in St George's Chapel at Windsor Palace, and around this time Arthur began his education. Over the next few years he would have different teachers, and he studied grammar, ethics, history and poetry as well. He was also noted to have been a very conscientious student, who was rather intelligent and skilled. It was said that Arthur had even memorised and remembered sections of Homer, Virgil and other historical works. With regards to his pastimes, he was also very skilled at archery, and was a very decent dancer, who would have impressed at court. By 1490 he had also been given his own household structure, and Henry VII and Elizabeth, Arthur's father and mother, would have a number of other children, including a sister named Margaret Tudor, who Arthur was very close with, and also the future Henry VIII. Arthur would die at a young age, and it's believed that he was sick throughout his life, but this is actually a mistake that occurred due to a letter written in 1502, and there was no account that Prince Arthur was ill during his early life. He was a rather tall child, and those within the Spanish court also thought he was handsome. With regards to what he looked like, he had small eyes, a high bridged nose, and also red hair, looking similarly to his younger brother Henry. He was also described as having a gentle personality, and was considered to be a delicate child. In summer 1490, Arthur became the warden of all the marches towards Scotland to protect the border region, despite being only around four. In October 1492, he was also named the Keeper of England, and the King's Lieutenant at the age of six, and his father also set up a council of the marches and Wales for Arthur to enforce the King's authority there. The council was headed by Jasper Tudor, and over the next few years the new prince was granted different powers to govern in Wales. This was seemingly strange, as he was still a young boy, and he was given lots of land in Wales as well. He was brought up alongside other strong nobles in the area, growing quite close to a few of these. With every young prince, especially one who was the heir apparent, it was of paramount importance that Arthur would marry and find a wife. A high profile marriage between Arthur and a princess from Europe could help England consolidate alliances and dynasties across the continent, possibly helping stave off any future wars or conflicts. It was planned that Arthur would marry a daughter 
of the Catholic Isabella I of Castile and Ferdinand II of Aragon to force for an alliance between England and Spain at the expense of France. It was proposed that Arthur would marry Catherine of Aragon, their youngest daughter, and negotiations took place between the two royal families. The deal was struck and it was said that as soon as they reached age within the Catholic Church, Catherine of Aragon and Arthur Tudor would marry. Catherine's dowry was set at 200,000 crowns, which today would have been around 7 million pounds. As Arthur was under age and below the age of consent, permission was sought and gained from the Pope, and the pair were betrothed on the 25th of August 1497. Two years later, they were married by proxy, and it was said that Arthur rejoiced the contract of marriage because of his deep and sincere love for the princess. Arthur would write to Catherine saying, I cannot tell you what an earnest desire I feel to see your highness, and the couple exchanged love letters. At 15, Arthur was deemed old enough to marry, and Catherine arrived in England on the 2nd of October 1501. The next month they met for the first time, and Catherine stated Arthur would be a true and loving husband. On the 14th of November 1501, the marriage of Arthur Tudor and Catherine of Aragon took place at St Paul's Cathedral, with the ceremony being conducted by the Archbishop of Canterbury, and following the ceremony, Catherine and Arthur left for Baynard's Castle for a reception, where they were entertained. Their wedding night was prepared with the bed being blessed by the Bishop of London, who prayed for the marriage to be fruitful, and after this the couple were left alone. The new royal couple Prince Arthur and Catherine would live at Tickenhill Manor in Worcestershire for about a month, and then they left for the Welsh marches and established a household at Ludlow Castle. Although Ludlow is in Shropshire, the castle was the administrative centre for the Government of Wales. Ludlow Castle was seen as a beautiful and impenetrable fortress which contained royal apartments and a number of huge buildings and other administrative buildings which would have governed the Welsh marches. There was a problem though, Arthur had seemingly been getting sicker and weaker since his wedding. Catherine was by his side and Arthur at the time was seemingly doing well, governing Wales despite being only a teenager. It was relatively quiet at this time, following a number of years during the medieval period where war and hostilities were common. In March 1502, Arthur and Catherine were struck down by an illness or disease, which was described as a malign vapour which preceded the air. Plague and illness had been lingering around Ludlow for a while, and the young Prince Arthur was struck down with this. Both him and Catherine were sent to their beds and kept inside their rooms whilst the royal doctors attended on them. The servants would pray many times a day for Arthur and their prayers would be in vain. It seems that they both suffered from a sweating disease that was a virus that made its victims feel intense heat and become delirious as if they felt their blood was boiling. This left the victims soaked through with sweat, but from this Catherine would recover. Catherine's husband Arthur though would not. She noted how Arthur suffered from the most pitiful disease and sickness that with so sore and great violence had battled and driven in its singular parts of him inward, that cruel and fervent enemy of nature, the deadly corruption, did utterly vanquish and overcome the pure and friendful blood without all manner of physical help and remedy. Arthur Tudor died on the 2nd of April 1502 at Ludlow at just the age of 15. When the king found out about the death of his son, Henry VII was distraught and his wife Elizabeth would reassure the king that they would have more children. Elizabeth would stay strong for her husband, but grieve in private. After his death, Arthur Tudor was embalmed, with his body being filled with spices, and he laid in state for days until his coffin was taken to a huge funeral at Worcester Cathedral. The weather that day was so bad that the cart carrying Arthur's coffin allegedly got stuck in mud, and a number of times oxen needed to be used to get the cart out of the mire. The funeral was spectacular, with 550 people involved, with 2,400 yards of black mourning cloth being brought, and over a thousand candles were burned up. The Bishop of Lincoln cast holy water and dirt into the grave of Arthur Tudor, and Henry VII ordered a grand tomb to be built in his son's memory. Now although Arthur Tudor's role in history seemingly is rather minor compared to many others, the impact of his death changed England forever. Without Arthur passing away at such a young age, one of England's most notorious and brutal kings would never have been crowned. 
After Arthur's death, Henry, his younger brother, would become the heir to the English throne. We are all familiar with the sort of King Henry VIII was, a man who would order the executions of dozens of thousands of people, including some of his closest friends, and even his wife's, and Henry would change England forever during his reign. However, he was never supposed to be king, and it was all planned for Arthur Tudor, his brother to have children with Catherine of Aragon, and then their heirs and children would inherit the throne. Instead, what England got was a tyrant who would rule over with an iron fist, and also marry his dead brother's wife, with Catherine of Aragon becoming the queen, but to her dead husband's brother. So although Arthur Tudor can be considered insignificant, the legacy of his death would shake the foundations of English history forever. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.